Good morning. Let us gather in our hearts as friends in this wild journey called life. Please enjoy our gathering music. Sing along as you would like. We'll build a land performed by the Kitsap UU Church. in Prescott, Arizona. I'm Kelsey Wilkes, and I'm your worship associate today. We extend a warm welcome to all, and we are glad you are able to join us. We hope you are in good health, and we want to stay connected, so please join us for the breakout rooms after the service. This will give us time to chat with one another in small groups. If you're joining us for the first time, please check out our website 
website for more information about Granite Peak at prescottuu.org. This is the mission statement of our congregation. We are a compassionate spiritual community that celebrates diversity, nurtures the personal and spiritual growth of all ages, shares our gifts, promotes justice for all, and serves the world we live in. We extend our special thanks to all who contributed to the presentation of our service today. Heather Knowles for technical direction, Leslie Grady for her photographs, Lena Huben for our piano accompaniment, the Granite Peak worship team, and we welcome today our very own Robert Shegod as our guest speaker. Although we are physically part, we are still in community and we continue with some of our meetings and activities virtually. So please continue to check the weekly peak, our website and the order of service for announcements. Children's faith development will be in person today and is happening now in the faith development building. Contact Beth Bostrom for information about next week. Many adult education courses are ramping up for their startup. Please pick the one you like and register. Empty Bowls is back on the square this year on Sunday, September 12th. And as always, we need all hands on deck. If you would like to volunteer in some capacity, please contact Norma Meyer and she will plug you into a slot. And now I will light our chalice. As we light this chalice today, let us join together in accepting each other, loving each other, growing together in spirit and purpose. You friends are like the stars. We don't always see one another, but we always know we're there. And now we will hear Robert's words of gathering followed by our opening song. Our opening words are from Bill Withers. I'm sure you'll recognize it. Sometimes in our lives, we all have pains. We all have sorrows. But if we are wise, we know that there's always tomorrow. Lean on me when you're not strong and I'll be your friend. I'll help, you, I'll help you carry on for it won't be long till I'm going to need someone to lean on. Please swallow your pride. If you, don't, if you have things you need to borrow for no one can fill those of your needs if you don't show them. You just call on me when you need a hand. We all need someone to lean on. I just might have a problem that you'll understand. We all need someone to lean on. If there is a load you have to bear that you can't carry, I'm right up the road. I'll share your load. Just call me. Lean on me. Thank you. And now please join in saying our covenant. <clears throat> Love is the doctrine of this congregation. The quest for truth is sacrament and service is its prayer. To dwell together in peace, to seek knowledge and freedom, to serve others in community, thus do we covenant together. Today, for our joys and sorrows, let us rejoice in the gifts from Mother Earth in the form of monsoon rains and continue to keep the firefighters in our hearts. 
And I offered joy for Granite Peak being represented in everybody's hometown, 4th of July parade, and the dedication of Nolene Patterson, Dan Reardon, and Marianne Erickson to make this a reality. Please hold Lee Phillips in your heart as she mourns the sudden death of her sister, and let us lift up all those sorrows that you may be holding close to your heart. And finally, a concern for our community as the Delta variant of COVID-19 has arrived with cases and hospitalizations increasing daily since the 4th of July. Please get vaccinated. And if you are not able to, please wear a mask. We are all in this together and responsible for one another. And now we will take our operatory as we listen to this musical interlude, please take a moment to embrace the feeling of connection and community that we have when we gather each week. Let us remember that this congregation and its programs are supported by your generosity. This month's seeds of support will go to GYCC, the Greater Yavapai County Coalition, which builds bridges for rural, LGBTQ plus communities across Northern Arizona through education, funding, safe spaces, networking, and advocacy. To give during this distance time, please go to prescottuu.org. On the bottom left-hand side, click the word donate to contribute. The link is also available in the chat on this video. What is given in love is received in gratitude. Blessed be you. I just love that so much. Um, it's unfortunate I have to sit in my chair because I want to dance. I think we should do a brave flash mob down on the square one day. So um, we'll start working on that idea. And now we will watch a series of videos, music, and a message from Robert Shegog, who is our neighbor. Everyone who comes to the ranch is a patient, yes. And every person who comes to the ranch is also a doctor. I'm sorry. Every person who comes to the ranch is in need of some form of physical or mental help. They're patients. But also every person who comes to the ranch is in charge of taking care of someone else. Whether it's cooking for them, cleaning them, or even a simple task as listening. That makes them doctors. I use that term broadly, gentlemen, but is not a doctor someone who helps someone else? When did the term doctor get treated with such reverence as, oh, right this way, Dr. Smith, or excuse me, Dr. Scholes, what wonderful foot pads, or pardon me, Dr. Patterson, but your flatulence has no odor. <laughs> At what point in history did a doctor become more than a trusted and learned friend who visited and treated the ill. Now you ask me if I've been practicing medicine. Well, if this means opening your door to those in need, those in pain, caring for them, listening to them, applying a cold cloth until a fever breaks, if this is practicing medicine, if this is treating a patient, then I am guilty as charged, sir. Did you consider the ramifications of your actions? What if one of your patients had died? What's wrong with death, sir? What are we so mortally afraid of? Why can't we treat death with a certain amount of humanity and dignity and decency and, God forbid, maybe even humor? Death is not the enemy, gentlemen. If we're going to fight a disease, let's fight one of the most terrible diseases of all, indifference. Now, I've sat in your schools and heard people lecture on transference and professional distance. Transference is inevitable, sir. Every human being has an impact on another. Why don't we want that in a patient-doctor relationship? That's why I've listened to your teachings, and I believe they're wrong. A doctor's mission should be not just to prevent death, but also to improve the quality of life. That's why you treat a disease. You win, you lose. You treat a person, I guarantee you, you'll win, no matter what the outcome. Now, here today, this room is full of medical students. 
Don't let them anesthetize you. Don't let them numb you out to the miracle of life. Always live in awe of the glorious mechanism of the human body. Let that be the focus of your studies and not a quest for grades, which will give you no idea what kind of doctor you will become. Mr. Adams, please turn and, and address the And don't wait till you're on the ward to get your humanity back. Start your interviewing skills now. Start talking to strangers. Talk to your friends. Talk to wrong numbers. Talk to everyone. Mr. Adams. And cultivate friendships with those amazing people standing in the back of the room. Nurses, they can teach you. They've been with people every day. They wade through blood and shit. They have a wealth of knowledge to share with you. And so do the professors you respect. The ones who are not dead from the heart up. Share their compassion. Let that be contagious. Mr. Adams, I demand that you turn and address the board. Sir, I, I want to be a doctor with all my heart. I wanted to become a doctor so I could serve others. And because of that, I've lost everything. But I've also gained everything. I've shared the lives of patients and staff members at the hospital. I've laughed with them. I've cried with them. This is what I want to do with my life. And as God is my witness, no matter what your decision today, sir, I will still become the best damn doctor the world has ever seen. Now, you have the ability to prevent me from graduating. You can keep me from getting the title and the white coat. But you can't control my spirit, gentlemen. You can't keep me from learning. You can't keep me from studying. So you have a choice. You could have me as a professional colleague, passionate, or you can have me as an outspoken outsider, still adamant. Either way, I'll probably still be viewed as a thorn. But I promise you one thing. I am a thorn that will not go away. Oh my, with Chase Freedom Unlimited, I earn all this cash back? Oh, I gotta tell everyone. Hey, Rita, you can earn 3% on dining, including takeout. Bon appetit. Hey, Kim, you earn 5% on travel purchased through Chase. Way ahead of you. Hey, Neil, you can earn 3% at drugstores. Buddy, I'm right here. Why are you yelling? Because that's what I do. You're always earning with 5% cash back on travel purchased through Chase. 3% at drugstores, 3% on dining, including takeout. And one Watching this commercial, there are five things that we can see here. A well-maintained neighborhood with high property values. A black man is a resident in this neighborhood. The black man is yelling without being arrested. A biracial woman is a resident in the neighborhood, but not living with Kevin. Kevin wants his neighbors to know all about this great deal. More often today, companies are not just reaching out to sell products, but also to send social messages. Toyota, Nissan, and State Farm are some of the companies that are sending messages of social change, saying that they are open for business, selling cars and car insurance. Some companies display multiracial families sending social messages of change. My favorite shows a white dad picking up his black daughter from school to go for ice cream. Credit Karma has a commercial with two men, one black and one white, in bed talking about their credit score. Other companies will reach out to show their values by showing the diversity of their employees, women working in non-traditional roles. David Thomas was a founder and owner of Wendy's and a strong supporter of the right wing. The LGBT community resisted his approach by, through social media, to boycott Wendy's. When he died and his daughter controlled the company, they ran a series of ads using drag queens to welcome the return of the LGBTQ plus customer. You do not have to own a company, be an elected leader, or have super skills to reach out to your neighbors. To reach out to others is to impact the community, the world, and yourself. I remember mama struggling 
as a single, uneducated mother of four and how she kept our family together by reaching out. She reached out to our neighbors and to the police when she worked the night shift at the county hospital. I remember listening to her on the phone, talking to one of her friends and saying, girl, they have chicken wings for 39 cents a pound down at the AMP. You better get down there and get some before they're gone. I remember mama cooking a lot of food and then fixing a plate of food and sending me to give it to an elderly neighbor. I remember mama giving away clothes that were too small for us to another family with children. It is important to establish a routine when reaching out. And sometimes we need a reminder of what those tips are, how to reach out. First, you need to establish a routine, which starts with getting out of bed. My grandmother used to say, most of the folks found in bed are dead. You're not dead. Get up and do something. One of my routines is to walk early in the morning. But with my recent health issues and the death of my dog, I stopped walking. A friend shared with me that the walking was not just for the dog, but also for me. When I returned to walking, people in my neighborhood and on the trails noticed that I had been absent and they asked about my dog. I shared with them about Brighton and then they encouraged me to keep walking. I was surprised at the number of people who had been watching me. What we do in our routine is our outreach. People are watching me and people are watching you. Secondly, our outreach to our neighbors is important and it impacts our community in a way that we may never know. In my past church, Gene always made the coffee for our social hour. When he was absent, the coffee just tastes different. Like my mother's cooking, his coffee was his identity. John Wooden won 10 NCAA basketball championships in 12 years, seven of them in a row. Winning games was his identity. At 10 a.m. in the morning, he could be found sweeping the gym floor. And when asked why he did this, his reply was, it keeps me humble, <clears throat> which is the basis of his identity. To find your identity, you need to find your broom. In order for my family to strive, my, mo my mother assigned each of us chores. And if we all did our chores, home would be fine. She would say to us, stay in your lane, take care of your identity, take care of your chores and everything will be fine. In our Granite Peak community, Heather Knowles has a talent for supporting the congregation in multiple areas. Pat and Ardella Moran have the gift of hospitality in the, the food pantry. If it's broken and needs to be fixed or built, see Dan Reardon or Dick Walters. Ray and Carol excel in organizational skills. The child in Bev Boston shines in the faith development classes. There are so many of us with personal identity and talents. And when we all work together, our family is fine. Next, to recognize and use our gifts, we need to be brave and courageous. A few weeks ago, Reverend Patty shared a Native American poem, which stated, the time of the lone wolf is over. Gather yourself, keep your eyes open and your head above the water. See who is there with you and celebrate. Sarah Bareilles in her song, Brave, encouraged her friends by singing, say what you want to say, let the words fall out. I wanna see you, I wanna see you be brave. We cannot not stand by waiting for someone else to do the work. We cannot stand by waiting for a hero. Tina Turner sings, we don't need another hero. We don't need to know the way home. We just need how to live beyond Thunderdome. The hero that we need is wearing our clothes. 
Garth Brooks tells us, there is a love that is burning deep in our soul, wanting to fly higher and higher, but it can, cannot exist standing outside the fire. We must get into the fire to, in order to survive. We must get involved. William Arthur Ward states, a risk must be taken because the greatest hazard in life is risking nothing. To laugh is to risk appearing foolish. To try is to risk failure. To expose your feelings is to, is to risk exposing your true self. To reach out to another is to risk involvement. Nelson Mandela states in his 1993 inaugural speech, our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, and fabulous? Who are you not to be? You're playing small does not serve the world. There's nothing enlightening about shrinking so that others won't feel insecure around you. We were born to manifest the glory of God that is within us. And it's not just in some of us, it's in everyone. And as we let our light shine, we unconsciously give others permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our fears, our presence automatically liberates others. When we shine our identities, our skills and talents, we are reaching out to our neighbors. When we reach out, we grow as a Granite Peak family. In the foyer of the church is a display of all the ways that you can reach out. Some of the most recent ways that Granite Peak has reached out are the kindness rocks, the outside gathering, the food pantry, the free libraries, the church cards that you can hand out to your friends, and wearing a UU t-shirt when you travel around the community. Recently, on a trip back east, I was wearing a UU t-shirt and had the opportunity to share what the t-shirt meant to me. Reaching out is a way to say, we are here for you. We are here for our church family. We are here for the Prescott area. We are here for Arizona and you, you like folks across the country. Reach out, take a risk and make a friend. Friends are like flowers. They may or may not do, they may or may not say, they just have to be. Finally, when we fail to get involved, we are surrendering our power to those who wish to control us. Life happens most when we are standing on the sidelines. Controllers are egotistical, self-centered people who see others as less than and not able to fully participate. Controllers have been around since the early 1500s with signs like Christians only, deed covenants, which excluded Jews, Blacks, and Asians from purchasing a home. The result and the influence of these control controllers formed ethnic ghettos in many major cities. Today, there are over 250 laws pending, pending bills nationwide that would restrict voting rights. In Arizona, Senate Bill 1485 and Senate Bill 1713 are just a couple of hosts of bills, if passed, would restrict voting rights. We must not participate, we must participate, reach out and get in the fire. If we are passionate about any local, state or national issue, we have the right to reach out. Stacey Abrams stated about these issues. If they don't give you a seat at the table, bring a folding chair. Your reaching out, your folding chair, your opinion is showing that you care. 
I want to close with a story about my partner's Aunt Mary. She lived on a limited income. She had severe arthritis. Her hands would often shake. She had no car and she depended upon family and friends for many of her needs. Yet every year we got a Christmas card from Aunt Mary. Her cards were different. At the top of the card, she had crossed out her name and added ours. At the bottom of the card, she had crossed out the sender's name and added hers. She only had to buy envelopes. And, some, and sometimes when she did have to buy a card, she would buy, she would pick up two envelopes. Sometimes the cards came in oversized envelopes. When she passed away, everyone was talking about her cards and many of us had saved her cards. We talked about who sent Aunt Mary the best and the funniest cards. This was Aunt Mary's outreach. Despite her limitation, like Aunt Mary, I urge you to find your talents, to find your identity, your passion, and find your broom and get busy.
Blessed mother, father, higher power, sustainer of life. We thank you for this time of fellowship and sharing. Life is always better when we can share a smile and do something to help others. We are grateful for the moments when our hearts are conscious of our gifts. Help us to be in love with every moment of our lives. Help us to pursue joy and happiness. Help us to be cheerful, kind, and kind to everyone we meet, and so it be. I, I, you know, I get nervous every time I do these things. You yeah. Know? And so the way I am in the social hall or in the congregation is different when I'm up there. I have to focus and my as part of my mother's training you know so blame it on mom oh thank you robert for your message and inspiration our closing song is won't you be my friend which includes photos of our friends enjoy Won't you be my friend? Won't you be my friend? Won't you take my hand? Won't you take my hand? Won't you come right here? Won't you come right here? And beside me stand. And beside me stand. Won't you be my friend? Won't you be my friend? Won't you dry my tears? Won't you dry my tears? Friends for years, we'll be friends for years. We're different on the outside, it's plain to see. Just one look can tell you from me. But look on the inside, and we're both the same. We're only people with different names. So, won't you be my friend? Won't you be my friend? Won't you take my hand? Won't you take my hand? Won't you come right here? Won't you come right here? And beside me stand. And beside me stand. Won't you be my friend? Won't you be my friend? Won't you dry my tears? Won't you dry my tears? Won't you make me laugh? Won't you make me laugh? We'll be friends for you. We'll be friends for years Thank you, Heather. Those were great photos. And now if you will join in saying the words on the screen as we extinguish this chalice. We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we are together again. And now I invite you to take as much time as you wish to visit with friends and visitors in our chat room. And Robert Chigog will stay in our main room. So if you would like to talk with Robert about his presentation about how to be good neighbors and friends, please just stay in the main room. Our worship time has ended and now our service begins. Go bravely forward in our continued support of a just world. Stay healthy, be safe, blessed be.